Hey everybody, this is Professor Williams, and I've gotten a couple of questions about the profit formula for your Monte Carlo simulation. So I'm going to do my best to go through this and get you some help. So at this point, you should have generated your random numbers um, for demand, production rate, and your material cost. So the next thing we need to do is we need to move them over to the left-hand side of your spreadsheet under demand, production rate, and material cost. And we've got to round those values. So I'm going to put my cursor in B11, and I'm going to use the equals round open parentheses, and I want it to round my first value of demand, and I want demand rounded off to zero decimal places, and I'm going to hit enter. And you'll see that it takes 92.78051. My numbers may differ from yours, um, and it rounds it to 93. So I'm simply going to take that, grab the corner, and drag it down all the way to the end to my last value down there in 110. I know there are easier ways to do this, but this gets it done. Right? So production rate per fabricator, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to say equals round. What I want it to round there is I want it to round the production rate per fabricator. I want that rounded off to zero decimal places as well, and I hit enter. I'm going to take this, I'm going to drag it all the way down. It would be different if we had 200 or 2,000 iterations, but we're okay doing it this way. All right, so for material cost, we're going to use the equal round function again, and I'm going to round my material cost. But this is a dollar figure, so I want it rounded to two decimal places. So I'm going to hit enter, and I'm going to take this, and I'm going to drag it all the way down. Now, my material cost is um, actually a cost, money, so leaving that entire um, array of cells highlighted, I'm going to come back up to the top. I'm going to go to home. And I'm simply going to select accounting number format, and that's going to give me my dollar values. Now I have demand, production rate, and material cost based off of my random numbers. Hmm. You should have also entered the selling price overhead cost in fabricator wages um, up at the top of your spreadsheet in the um, in the table. <clears throat> so. Where everyone is seems to be struggling is this weekly profit in the middle. So we need to calculate the revenue per week um, anywhere from one to six fabricators. And so to get the revenue, we're going to multiply selling price times the number of jackets sold. However, the number of jackets sold is going to be the lower of demand and produced values. So I'm going to have to use a minimum function to say, take that selling price and multiply it by the lower of production or material production or demand. <clears throat> then I have to look at my cost. Well, I have three cost components materials, wages, and overhead. So I have to consider the selling price up in B2, the demand in column B, and the number of jackets produced in column C, <clears throat> which is basically my production rate per fabricator. I also have to take into consideration here the number of of fabricators, and that's going to be in that row 10, that's your cells E through J, where you have our staffing level of one through six. I have to take into account my overhead cost, 
of $800 up in B3. And then I have to determine my wages, which is going to be weekly wages times the number of fabricators. I have to look at how much material is being used, and that's a function of material cost times the number of fabricators times the lower of demand or production. And what that gives me is that gives me a formula that says take my selling price times the lower of demand or production minus my overhead costs minus my wages times the number of fabricators, then I have to take minus my lower of demand or production times the number of fabricators. So what's going to happen is we are going to take and enter all of this into this cell E11. We're going to build our profit formula there and then we'll be able to copy it because we use some absolute and relative cell references. I can copy it to the entire body of this table. I'm just going to be able to take it and just copy it and drop it and it's going to calculate it for you. You have to do this before you calculate your average standard deviation best case and worst case scenario in your simulation results table. So I'm going to say that my cost formula or my profit formula that's going to go here is going to be <clears throat> equals and we want B2 which is our selling price, and we're going to hit function F4 because I need that to be a hard sell reference. I want it to always go to that selling price. And I'm going to take that and multiply that times selling price times the minimum. Right? The minimum is going to be the minimum of B11, which is my demand. Now for B11, I want the absolute reference to be my column. So I'm going to put a hard sell reference to lock the column. And I want it to also look at the minimum of remember we wanted the minimum of demand or production so I'm gonna put in an absolute column reference for C Oops. okay okay <clears throat> for C 11 I'm gonna add my dollar sign in front of C to lock it to column C and that's going to be times, oops, times E, which is going to be my, um, oh boy, okay, E, and I want that to be locked to cell 10, which is the number of fabricators. So I have locked um, my selling price absolutely. Then for my minimum, I have it locked as to column B. Column C is locked. And now here I want to lock it to um, row 10. So that gives me my first part, which is my selling price. Now I need to subtract my overhead costs, which are in B3, again, function F4, 
that gives me an absolute cell reference for overhead costs. Now I have to look at my fabricator's wages. So I have to subtract that because that's coming off of my, um, my sales. And I'm going to do that by taking um, my fabricator's wages, function F4. And I want to lock that cell reference. And I want to multiply that by the number of fabricators, which is going to be E10. But remember, I want to lock it as to my row, which is going to be row 10. And now that gives me my fabricator wages. Oops, wrong place. Now I have to subtract. Um, what am I missing? Oh, I'm missing material cost. So I've got to subtract material cost. And that's going to be in D11. And again, I want to lock that as to the column. I'm going to lock it to column D. I'm going to multiply my material costs times E10. E, yep, same thing. E dollar um, 10, which is my number of fabricators times C11, which is going to be my production rate per fabricator. And I want to lock that column reference as well. So that's a dollar sign. And now I'm going to close this. And I think that if I hit enter, it should give me what I want. So what we know is that for in simulation number one, if demand is 93, production rate per fabricator is 32, my material costs are $8.77, that my weekly profit will be a loss of $180.64. And because in that cell, we used the hard and absolute cell references, I can now take and drag this across. You'll see that that's for my simulation one. And now I'm just going to take that. I'm going to highlight those cells and I'm simply dragging down okay, all the way to the bottom to my last simulation. I'm going to let go and it's going to populate all of my profit for me. So the secret to this is to get that profit formula in cell E11. Make sure that you use the proper relative and absolute cell references because once you've got that formula in E11, you can just copy it to all of the other cells in your weekly profit. So now when you go to do the second flag simulation where some things have changed, you're going to use the same formulation of this profit formula. However, do not copy and paste the formula from E11 on this worksheet into your worksheet two. Because we have hard cell references, it will go back to this original data. So you're going to have to replicate this formula in your second worksheet. So do not copy that profit formula from flag simulation one into flag simulation two. You're just going to need to follow 
the same pattern right, or put in the same for formula, but your hard and relative set, um, cell references have to come from this worksheet. Remember, absolute cell reference means just that, absolutely going back to that cell. So once you've got this done, um, average is going to be easy. It's going to be simply your average function for one um, fabricator, standard deviation. You're going to use your standard deviation function. Best case scenario is going to be an equal max. Worst case scenario is going to be an equal min. So I think that should get you going. If you still have questions, you know how to reach me. Have a great day.